Hello and welcome to Step by Step Painting with me, Christine McShane. Today we're going to be um, painting this delightful path in the park at sunrise. Now this painting is going to help us work on a few different items. One of them is going to be the shadows, so we need to understand light source. It's a diffused light source, which is, you know, the rising sun. It's not as strong as the middle, middle day, but it's still going to create shadow. Let's take a look at what we're using as far as colors go. Of course, we have our wonderful white. Now in the green family, I'm also bringing in a yellow green phthalo color. This is a lovely bright color. It can also be mixed with a bright light yellow, cadmium yellow is good, or a Hansa and then the hooker green, um, or phthalo green, I'm sorry, a phthalo green. So you're going to mix those two together and you get a very vibrant green. And then by adding white, you'll come down to this yellow green phthalo. I'm using two yellows. I put them side by side so that you can see that. This is the lighter one right here. And this is the medium cadmium. You can see how much more opaque and kind of almost a little bit dull that color is, which is fine. I want it that way. This one is very vibrant, translucent, and will pep everything up if we need to. And then of course my mid-tone green, a hooker green, and my burnt sienna, burnt sienna solves every problem, so it's always gonna be around. Now this color here is a really neat one. It's called quinquinidone magenta. And that, that is going to feature quite heavily in the trees and in the shadows. And we may even use a little bit to mix it up in to make a darker green. And I have orange on my palette as well. I like to add orange into green sometimes because it gives, it tones the green without making it too dark. So let's take a look at our painting. The background is going to come in with a variety of our yellows, largely that cadmium yellow medium. So let's start with some white. I'm going to pull some of that in and see what that color looks like. That's pretty much where I want it to be. Now if I'm going to add a little of that brightener in there, that bright yellow, and it picks it up ever so slightly. And I'm going to just go all the way across the top. My goal is that by the time I reach below the halfway point, it's going to be a little bit lighter where the sun itself is coming up. So I can afford to actually add some of the straight uh, cadmium yellows in here too, around the top end where, the, where that light is sort of casting off from around the sun itself. I'm not looking particularly to make it all one color. Could be a, an interesting kind of a cloud formation starting up. Let some of the things happen up here on the canvas. Don't try to over control it because as I said, it's a fairly loose painting. And even the painting that I'm doing today isn't going to be exactly like my reference photo. I don't like to try to copy exactly. Um, sometimes it just happens that it does that go that way. I kind of like to keep myself open to whatever might, else might show up. And so kind of makes, much, makes it much more interesting. So as you can see, I'm rolling my wrist and making that really soft blend up here on the canvas. Yellow, oh, that's a nice straight yellows. And then I'm putting some white in and I'm gonna blend up, rolling my wrist like that helps to blend that all the way across. Um, I call this my rolling wrist conducting music stroke. I have not thought of any way of making it into a nice succinct name but it does get the point across. I'm adding white, and then I'm blending it up so I can kind of soften those colors a little bit. It's early morning, it's not real bright. Um, the sunsets are the ones that tend to be more dynamic in that regard. Sun rises, a little softer. Now, if you get too much going on, too much bright here, once you put that on, you can always pick up just white and come in over the top and pull that back slightly. Okay, so now I'm using um, a pretty basic technique of creating perspective, and that is by putting a path in. So let's use 
my cadmium yellow light uh, medium to just kind of draw the path. Now remember at the front of the path it's going to be wider because sh it should look like you're kind of close by the path because that's where your viewpoint is coming from, you know, standing from. And then I want to come up into just to the right of my horizon and there's going to be shrubbery in there. So now the path is going to go out and then it's going to flatten as the further it gets out it's going to flatten out. You're not going to see all of the little zigs and zags up front like that. It has to get flat. So to do that I'm going to just get that, make a really tight bend and then maybe I will, now this bend will be bigger. And as it comes out it gets wider closer to you. And I'm not even going to worry too much about the size or width of that because it may be covered up by grasses anyway. So this is my grass back um, tree line back in here. So I'm going to go ahead and put the back back trees in and then I'll be putting my magenta trees in front. To make a nice warm kind of realistic green but not too much in your face I'm going to take the hooker green and I'm going to pull a little of that burnt sienna into it. Be very careful when you're adding complements like that because they tend to get brown or grey fairly easily. So add in small increments so that you can control just how browned out or greyed out they become. Alright, so I think we have a nice colour going on there. That looks good. I'm going to pick up my smaller brush. This one's a four and I'm going to take that green. Now my, my yellow is not entirely dry but that little blend won't hurt because we're talking about a diffused light in the background. I still think that's a little bit too blue. So I'm going to pull up some more of my burnt sienna and I'm just making very soft shapes of trees in the background here. See the difference between the two colors by adding that burnt sienna? I can go back over that again. I'm making blocked in shapes because I'm not looking for detail. Out further back you're going to see less detail and you don't want to confuse the, the viewer when you have all the detail up here with the same amount of detail towards the back. So let's just keep blending now. I'm pulling yellow off so I'm going to wipe it off onto my paper towel. If I add water at this point to try to clean my brush, I'm going to make everything blend together and run just way too much. Now I'm in danger of everything becoming, you know, um, the, the same. So I don't want that much sameness. My granddaughter would call it same, same. But there we go. So I'm going to put a few up taller up here. And Here. Maybe it gets a little taller. As the yellow dries, I can start adding more of that so that I can get a little bit of a deeper color because the, the, what we're seeing on this side of the sun should be in shadow. It shouldn't be a really light uh, green. So I'm just using real soft brushiness, pushing against the bristles of the brush opens them up and you get these scratchy shapes which are great for um, foliage especially far away. So I'm liking how dark that's getting. So what I'm going to do now is take a little bit of that quinquinidone magenta. Let's see what that does. Now it will gray it out slightly but it gets a lot deeper. Which works, works for me. There we go. Little variation, but it's a subtle variation and that's what we're looking for is we're just trying to practice what we know and that is that back in the distance there can be variety, there can be variation, but it can't be a lot of contrast that's demanding our attention. So now we're going to continue on, we're going to put some of that dark back in and I'm going to leave some of that lighter, those lighter pieces too because it's creating a lovely layered effect. That, we, that works really great for a nice loose painting. Again, we're going for those loose strokes. 
If you feel you're in danger of, try, of getting too much detail and trying to go detail oriented, step away from the painting. Take about three or five steps away and look at it. It's probably coming together way better than you imagined. So just kind of let that happen up here on the canvas. So now we're going to create the grassy area. Now there's a lot of green in this painting so we have to vary it up a little bit. It stands to reason that the grasses on this side are in the most shadow. So I'm going to take that hook of green, a little of that burnt sienna and the quincrinidone and I'm going to really put some lovely deep shadow areas and I'm using a scrubbing technique. I'm not making a specific grass um, stroke. Um, I just want it to just have a, a nice scrub to it so that, that you can imagine that it's a nice soft grassy area. And of course they're not putting a mower through here because it's in the forest so we don't want to make it too even. Okay so these these trees out here are also casting off a shadow. Remember because they're the sun's behind them so we want that to be a bit darker. And now I'll show you what I do with that orange. I'm going to pick my uh, hook of green to the side here, pull some of that orange into it. Now it's going to warm the green up and slightly lighten it. So let's take a look. It's kind of brownie there. Let's get some more. There we go. Let's take a look at what happens up here. So it's, see how much brighter it is? It's not as dull. I'll do that. See how much it's not as dull as this? So it's a good mid-tone to start scrubbing in. And now I'm scrubbing but I'm keeping my hand to the back of my brush as far as I can. That's easier to do when you're standing than when you're sitting. So it keeps me open and smooth and gives me a little flourish with my brush stroke so that I'm loose. We're going for loose here. So I would like to have some sunshine in here. So this is where I would pick up some of that bright yellow and add it into that particular mix that I have. Let's bring it over here so you can see. See how much brighter that is? Let's add some of that in where we know the sun's going to be coming through. And we can go even brighter than that, oh yes we can, by adding some white to that mix. Or you can bring in your phthalo yellow green, that's okay too. And we're going to start to put in, oh look at that, see how the nice contrast. So let's put a little bit of that in. Remember if we don't have the um, highs and lows and the contrast between the darks and lights, it's all going to be muddy. There we go. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Again, going from dark to light in this particular painting. Let's go. Da, da, da. And I like the way, even though I haven't, I've mixed my colors on the palette, I didn't over blend. So sometimes some of that quincrinidone will come out on its, on its own because as you can see on my palette, you can still sort of see it in with the greens. So it comes out up here as well. Looks like I meant to do that. Works pretty good. And my orange and green. And again, so you can see some of the orange coming through. Makes it much more of an interesting painting. Especially because the tone of the sky is yellow. So to get some of that orange showing kind of carries that across to the bottom of the the painting too. And we're going to bring some of our lovely yellows in. That's pretty bright. I might need to tone that one down a smidge. But let's just see before we do that, let's just see what it does. I mean, my first, re my first reaction to it is, whoa, that is pretty bright. But I'm going to keep going until I take another step back and look at it because by pulling some of this into there 
I may be able to just sort of work with it because it doesn't have to be exact to this side because the light's going to be different on either side. And the darks again towards the back where these are going to cast shadow. Right. So there we go. That's our first go round. Now, when you do something like this, you can always edit as you kind of as you come across. So I want to make the path more of that peachy soil color that you can see in the original painting. So I'm going to take the burnt sienna to the side, a little quincrinidone and white. Let's start there, see what we've got. Again, towards where the sun is will be lighter than down here. So I'm going to sketch in that color. And get a little lighter, a little bit more burnt sienna, take it out of that purple a bit. Going from dark on the right to a lighter color, adding a little of the yellow, the, the medium yellow. And then I'm going to also add a little bit just straight white. Trying to knock that back a bit. Coming back up there, I'm going to bring in a bit more white towards the back as it starts to get closer to the source of the sun and then it's going to get darker again when it gets locked up into that darker area back in there. So let me just add straight burnt sienna back in here. pulling it down in here. Okay, now I'm going to take straight burnt sienna and kind of give it a little bit more warmth and interest up front. Okay, so I want to now blend the grass back into these areas and just little brushes, brush strokes. So when I'm pulling up, I'm pulling away from the canvas and uh, you'll get to see kind of like little brushy green grasses. Let's get some darker ones too. And on this side a little bit too. Now on this side, you're going to see more of the grass. On this side, you're going to see more of the base of the grass. So I'm going to take the quincrinidone and the green and darken that area down here. So it's the base there. And now there's going to be a bit of shadow on this side. Same thing. Very little detail, just, just the shadow. Okay, so that's our background. Now let's go ahead and put in our trees. So I'm going to use uh, both the number four bright because I'm going to also use it as the chisel side, which means the thin side straight up and down and the fat side flat. Let's put in some background trees because the other brush I want to use is the number two or number zero, depending on the brush you're using, but it's a round brush. And I'm going to use some water and some quincrinidone. And I'm going to get kind of wiggly most of these trees, as you can see, go all the way up through to the top of the painting. They're not going to be stuck down in here. We're looking through them. So we're going to do a back range of trees and I'm just going to pull those down. And as you can see, it has this really great color against the yellow, uh, mostly because they're very close to complement colors. So these ones can be in leaning off to the side. You can just kind of create your own tree line and I'm bringing them down into here that they can kind of get lost down in there. Don't forget to add water uh, just a little bit to thin it out so it'll come off your brush nice and easily. Get loose with this. Remember, it's just to have fun 
and practice and learn something from the techniques that we're using. And the more you relax as you paint, you'll find that there'll be less things that you're not as happy with. When I practice painting, I do just that. I just paint things, whether I really want to keep them or not. Sometimes I'll paint right over the top of them just because I want to practice trying the technique, the color combinations, things like that. I actually really like the warm tones of this one. Okay, so that's enough in the background. Let's put a few of the bigger trees in the foreground. Now these ones are up front a bit so you can add either the green or a little bit of black in with your concrinidone. I'm going to try a little bit of that green in there with it just to kind of deepen it. And this is in reverse of what we did with the green. In the green we used a lot of the green and a little bit of the concrinidone. In this one we're switching out our ratio. So I'm going to do this big one up here. It's kind of mid ground but it's going to come all the way down here. And if it goes over the ones I've just drawn, all the better. Because it creates that something else to look through, which creates perspective. There we go. Now my trees are wider at the base than they are at the top. And I'm just going to spread out a little bit here and use my finger just to soften it to give it a landing space. Now my light source is here to in the center so I'm going to have my little bit of shadow off here to the right same color just really lightly and then I can just go ahead and smear it with my finger or if you don't like to use your finger you can go ahead and get a moist just really slightly damp paper towel and I'm going to create a bit of a shadow coming off to the side. Again the quinquinodones a little bit of green I'm going to stagger it. You don't want all of these trees on the same plane. We're in a park, we're not an orchard. So let's put another one right up here. There he is. And again, a little bit of blob at the bottom, using my hand to sort of smear that um, shadow. Now at this time of day, the shadows are fairly long. go and let's go over here and we're going to sort of put this next one a little bit further down and again the shadow going away from the light source which is going to be in here and we're just going to smear that down there <laughs> and diffuse it all right doing pretty good and then we're just going to come right through here and do some more trees and their shadows off to the side and of course all of the trees although these ones are at the forefront they don't all have to be the same size um, at all, as you know, I'm sure you're very familiar with how trees work. So we have that great feeling of, of the um, atmosphere that we're looking for. Now I'm going to use that same color just to kind of darken up a little bit here in the back. So when you finished your painting, basically finished your painting, you know, the outlines and all of the uh, blocking in, that's when you come back in and you start to finesse your highs and lows, your darks, your shadows and your lights. So in this case, a little bit darker in the background. Here we go. To give that just waking up kind of feeling. And you can even take a little bit of that and put in a few, just little quick little twiggery in the background like so and I'm just slicing through with this number two brush anything to continue to add some uh, points of interest and realism and potential there and then if you'd like to you can come in across the top 
And I'm gonna use my bigger brush again and a little bit of the green with orange and perhaps a little bit, I'm gonna mucky it up a little bit with that um, quincrinidone, quincrinidone. And I can go ahead and just put some of that top foliage in. Not a solid line, but just a little bit to soften that up. And I'm just scrubbing, really, essentially just scrubbing that and pushing up against my brush, opening it up so that I'm getting those clumps of foliage that we see through. And then if you'd like to, you can get a little bit of the orange and green, especially up in here where you're going to get some of that, that lovely light from the morning sun hitting it. And so there we go. And we didn't use a lot of our phthalo yellow green, but you could certainly put a few little specks in where you start to see the light showing. And again, down in here too, if you really would like to add that little bit of light light into the grasses. Well, I hope you've enjoyed doing this piece with me. We're creating atmosphere by the use of diffused light, warm tones, and our shadows. I hope we'll see you next week.